It's been more than half a year since Apple showcased Universal Control, and we now finally have a first look on how the feature works. If you don't know what Universal Control is, here's a quick recap. With Monterey, the latest OS X version, we can use a keyboard, mouse, or trackpad to control other devices in the chain. So we can use an iMac's keyboard to write on an iPad, or use one trackpad to control two Macs, and so on and so forth. It might not sound like a big deal, but man oh man you need to use this in order to see how amazing this feature is. So let's have a closer look. When I first enabled the feature, it was really nice to see that the system had already figured out iPad's position relative to my Mac. So the screen placement was correct from the get-go. I just had to move my mouse to the left and I could immediately start working on the iPad. I'm not exactly sure if they actually detect the placement of the iPad or they just assume that since I'm moving the cursor all the way to the left, the iPad would naturally be there. Whatever the case may be, it was impressive to see. Supposedly the system is intelligent enough to understand the placement, but when I tried moving the iPad to the other side, the screen placement didn't change. Either way, the feature is still in beta, so maybe this functionality will come at a later point. In the meantime, if you want to change the position of the screen, you can just go to the system preferences and do that. It's not a big deal. Now, let's see what the feature is capable of. As I've mentioned already, any input devices we might have are available to all computers and tablets. Keyboard, mouse, trackpad, it's all there ready to use. We can use the mouse to move to the iPad, and now we're interacting with the iPad instead of the Mac. We can move between screens, click on an app, or go into a split screen. It all works as expected. Now let's check the keyboard. We can go back to the home screen with the command H, navigate between the iPad screens with the command key and the left and right arrows. We can choose an application with the arrow keys, open an application with return, and we can also switch between apps with the usual command and tab. As you can see as I'm doing all that, there's zero lag. The moment I press the key, the action is instantaneous. Of course, the same goes for the trackpad. We can swipe left and right to move between screens. And let's pick the Photos app by going into the application switcher. We just have to swipe up and pick the Photos app. And now we can move between pictures. It's super fast as if we're working right on the iPad. We can zoom in on a picture, for example. We can zoom out. We can move to the next picture. It's really awesome. And in case you're wondering why I have pictures of food and measurements, it's because I'm preparing a collection of scan 3D objects. More on that on a future video. There's no lag when we switch from one input device to the next. For example, we're currently using the trackpad to move around images, but I can quickly bring up Spotlight with the keyboard, type in Safari, and then continue navigating with the trackpad. And then I can move back to the Mac and do something else there. It's all incredibly seamless. Now let me show you some other cool stuff. Moving files around is hands down one of my favorite features because it blurs the lines between devices. I record my audio for these videos on the iPad and before Universal Control I had to use AirDrop to transfer the files. I had to select the file, click on the share button and click on my computer. It's a really nice and fast way to transfer files but now things are even better. I can just drag and drop the file from my iPad to the desktop and that's it. The file is now on the Mac. I mean, come on, <laughs> isn't that cool? It feels so organic and natural. And of course, it goes the other way around as well. If we have something on the Mac, we can quickly transfer it to the iPad without any issues. So we can go to the Files app, for example, and then move a file there. This is extremely convenient and I've already lost count of how many times I've used this. And I've only been testing the feature just the past couple of days. Universal Control works with other applications as well, not just Apple-specific applications. For example, let me bring up Twitter and let's write a post. This is so cool. It will all make sense once you watch my next video. But for now, 
trust me. It's <laughs> really cool. <laughs> and let's also drag an image from the Mac to the iPad and hit send. Isn't that amazing? The feature is still in beta, so there are some kinks here and there. It might also have to do with just specific applications missing some important elements. I don't know exactly what it is, but let me show you what I mean. In Illustrator, switching from one tool to the next with a keyboard feels laggy. Maybe it's the animation that makes things feel slow. I don't know, could be, but things feel slower than they should be. I also have the feeling that text input is slightly laggy as well. There's a tiny bit of delay there. But things seem to work fine in the Affinity apps. So in Affinity Designer, switching between tools feels fast. Typing with the text tool also feels like it's instantaneous. I don't know, it might just be my imagination, but I have the feeling that things happen with a bit of a delay in the Adobe apps. But the good thing is that Universal Control seems to work by default on all applications. My guess is that as long as the app complies with Apple's SDK, these types of features will work for free without any extra work from the developer. And when you get to work with Universal Control and a pro app, the feature feels magical. For example, let's bring up Nomad. I can just drag a file from my Mac to the iPad and now I have the object on the iPad and I can start sculpting immediately. It's really cool to see and it blows my mind how great it all works. I like the idea of dividing tasks between devices and then using one input device to control everything. Lately I've been doing this uh, quite a lot. For example, I have a game running on the iPad as I'm working on the Mac on tasks that don't require my undivided attention like uh, going through my inbox, paying bills, stuff like that. So I usually have a game of Hearthstone running on the iPad. When my turn comes up, I can just move the mouse to the left play my turn, and then move back to the Mac and continue with my work. Of course, we could do all that with just one device and two displays, and as a matter of fact, I could just use the iPad as a second display for the Mac, but I kind of like the idea that one device is responsible for one specific task. And that's the brilliant thing with Apple's strategy. We currently have multiple ways of working with these devices. Based on the task at hand, we can choose a workflow that works best for that given situation. For example, we could use the iPad as a second display. I do that all the time when I use Final Cut and I want to see how the colors look on another screen. We can also use the iPad in combination with Photoshop or other applications like ZBrush. So the iPad plays the role of a Wacom tablet, which makes sense because the iPad is a much more capable and powerful device than any Wacom tablet. It's one of the reasons I don't use a Wacom anymore, because I have the iPad sitting right next to me. And now on top of all these ways of working and interacting with a computer and a tablet, we have universal control which makes the switch between devices a seamless experience. I think no other company currently has put so much effort and thought behind this. And I'm sure to have all this work so seamlessly, there's some serious development going on behind the scenes. If you haven't used any of these features, I would encourage you to do so. It's really impressive to see, and it's a glimpse of things to come in the future. This seamless interaction and switching between devices feels like the way devices will work in a few years. Anyway, I think you get the point. Things are going to be super exciting, but for now, let's see how we can enable this feature. First off, Universal Control is still in beta, so you will need the beta version of Monterey. Once you have that, it's just a matter of going to the display preferences and then enabling all of these features. And on the iPad, we have to go to preferences, general, and then airplay and handoff and enable the cursor and keyboard option. And that's it, you're all set. I had to restart the Mac to make it work, so if it doesn't work for you right from the get-go, just restart both the iPad and Mac and chances are it will work then. This feature will be incredibly useful if you also have more than one Mac sitting side by side. I had this set up a few months ago and it was incredibly annoying having to move from one device to the next. Having universal control would have been a much nicer experience, especially when moving files between computers. Anyway, I think I pretty much covered everything. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'm also curious to hear what you think about universal control. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.